All right, everybody, so welcome. In this video, we are going to take our expanding and factoring of expressions up to the next level and start looking at uh, problems that are involving some negatives. Um, so you should have this page in your Unit 3 tab. We are going to get started. Again, we are going to keep using the distributive property to factor and expand expressions now involving some negatives. So for the warm-up, here is a problem that is completed, right? Take a look over this. Pause the video here and see if you can spot the mistake. There's a mistake that we talked about um, and said this is something, a really small detail, but is very important that a lot of people have missed. So see if you can come up with um, where that mistake is located and how you might fix the problem. Okay, so hopefully you've taken a quick look at this. Um, look to the original problem. So 3 fourths times 8a minus 16b, right? We said anytime we are subtracting, we are taking things away. So it is going to have to be a negative. So it looks like that's where the student missed um, their negative sign. That would make this a negative 12b, which in the final answer, instead of a plus sign, it would be a negative. Everything else, though, seems to check out, especially with the multiplication, like 3 fourths times 8 and 3 fourths times 16. So it looks like just that negative sign was where they missed. All right, so let's take a look. Let's jump right in with a first example. So we're going to start with the blue example. So again, we are using our rectangle method. We are trying to get both forms, the factored form and the expanded form. So again, we said expanded form is whatever is inside the rectangle. And that looks like this is done. So let's write it out. So we know the expanded form is negative 8x plus, because it's a positive 14, so plus 14. We are just trying to figure out what the factored form has to be. Again, we said the thing that comes out front is the first part of our factored form. And then what comes on top, so in this case, 4x minus 7, that is going to be what goes in our parentheses. So all we have to do is fill this in. So we know 4x minus 7. And then maybe you remember from um, our last example, our last set of notes, what goes in this first line is your GCF. So it's what you can take out the largest thing that both terms, negative 8x and 14, have in common. So first of all, we have a negative 8 and a 14. They're both even numbers, so you can definitely factor out a 2, right? Can we do anything else? You could try more, you could try a greater number, but it would still give you a decimal. So 2 is going to be the biggest thing that we can factor out. This term has an x, this one does not, so we cannot factor out an x from those terms. However, the only other thing that we would need to check, and it's actually a nice hint, is they want us to factor this, which we're doing, by pulling out the GCF, but they already gave us part of the factored form. So let's use that. We're, let's look at just the whole number part. So we're starting inside. The expanded form is a 14, and the factored form, that becomes a negative 7. So how would you get from 14 back to 7? Well, you know you're going to have to divide by 2, and the sign is switching, so you would be dividing by a negative 2. Let me move that over so it's clear. So you're dividing by a negative 2. And let's just check, because if you do it for this side, you better be doing it for the first term, too. So let's see. So negative 8x, and we need to get to 4x. And if we divide by a negative 2, that will definitely get us there. So our GCF in this problem is actually going to be a negative 2. So that's what's going to come out in the uh, front of our parentheses for our factored form. So that one is good. Again, we could find this GCF on our own, but if they fill in part of the, the rectangle for you, like the top part, use that to help you, right? So when you, on your own, take a look at the purple example, use the fact that you have a 1 here to figure out what your GCF is going to be. Okay, so we're going to leave that purple example for you to try. We're going to take a look at the green one now. So let's see. Again, expanded form is inside the rectangle. We don't know that. But we do know our factored form. So we know the negative 1 half goes out front. And the 6x 
minus 10 is what's going to go inside of our parentheses. So this is just like we looked at yesterday. Now we just need to multiply. So, and again, use your calculator for this. Negative 1 half times 6. Negative 3 is what that's going to equal if you multiply. And then, of course, we still have the x. So this is going to be a negative 3x. And then we're going to take negative 1 half times a negative 10. Half of 10 is just 5. Negative times a negative will be a happy answer. So that's going to be a positive 5. So our final answer is negative 3x plus 5. All right. So you, and again, after the video, we're going to have you try the yellow example on your own. Um, very similar to the one that we just looked at in green. All right. If you scroll to examples 5 and 6, we are going to leave the first one, example 5, to you. But we are going to look at example 6 together. They want us to expand. So that means we're solving for what's inside the rectangle. So let's see if we know what we can put on the outside. Yesterday we said the thing that comes out front is what's going to go on the left side of the rectangle. If it just is a negative sign, that's technically a negative 1. So we can put that there. And again, what else? Everything that's inside the parentheses is what goes on top of your rectangle. So this is going to be a negative 6n, don't lose that negative, plus a positive 8. All right, and let's expand by multiplying. So negative 1 times negative 6 will get you a positive 6, and don't lose your n. And then negative 1 times a positive 8 will give you a negative 8 for your answer. So your expanded form is what's inside the rectangle, so that is 6n minus 8. And we're good. All right, let's wrap things up by looking at um, example 7 and 8. So again, example 7 is a little bit larger, but you're expanding still, so I think you're ready for this one. We're going to set you up with your highlighting, so that's going to be helpful. Make sure you put everything in the right spot of your rectangles, and then it says expand, so you're solving for what is inside. Hint, hint, don't lose your negative sign. There should be two of them um, in the blue and then one in the yellow. All right, but for our final example in the video, we're going to take a look at number eight. So it says factor, so that means we're trying to figure out what goes on the outside of the rectangle. So we should know what goes on the inside, and we sure do. They tell us that negative 18x. So that's our first term, plus a positive 6. Just like we talked about yesterday, right? A plus sign or minus is what breaks the problem into two pieces. So that's how we know which goes in this box and which goes in this box. All right, so we are factoring. So we need to, and I can put the lines here, that might help. We need to figure out what the GCF is going to be, and we know that that goes here. So I know earlier in this video, they filled in some of these numbers to help us get our GCF, right? This one does not do that. So we need to actually go on our own to get the GCF, but I think we're ready. Negative 18 and a 6. They're both even, so you could pull out a 2. They actually both are multiples of 6 as well. So we can factor out a 6. One of them has an X. One of them does not, so we cannot factor out an x. So 6 is going to be our greatest common factor. If we do negative 18 divided by 6, you can check in your calculator, but that should give us a negative 3. And don't lose the x. That stays with it. And then hopefully you can figure this one out. 6 divided by 6 will just leave us a 1 for our last, um, last term on the factor form. And then all we have to do is just put everything together and write our final answer. So blue is on top, yellow is out front. So we are going to write this as 6 times 3x, negative 3x, I'm sorry, minus plus 1. Right? It's a positive 1, so it's going to be a plus sign. So here's our final answer. That is the factored form that we got from the expanded form. Okay, so hopefully these examples helped. You have these completed on your OneNote. All we're going to ask that you do now is go in and fill out the four problems that are still blank. 
Um, again, we de we've done examples in this video that are very similar. You can check your answers in the OneNote content library or the answer key on Canvas. So good luck with those.